So there are a ton of these 1648 John boats that were retrofitted to be production bass boats from way back in the 80s and 90s. And we got one and we have just freshly gutted it, went through all the nonsense that came with that. But we finally got the boat clean to like a fair standard. You know, other than the aluminum being a little bit dirty and some parts corroded, the hull was basically in really good shape for being on the earth for like 50 years. But this transom, it's a problem. It has taken the most damage and is likely the most corroded part on the entire boat. We have to replace it first. That means we have to go through all the tomfoolery that comes with taking one of these production back ends off and then hoping the transom itself at the back is not too far gone that it can't be replaced. And once that's all done, we're gonna stick a transom that will last just as long as the hull. Will be the last transom we ever have to put in this boat ever again. All right guys, update on the autoboat systems. They are on their way here. We had to make sure that they were gonna be what we said they were gonna be before they got here. So just a little bit of extra time, but really not a big delay. They're gonna be here in October and the first units when they come here, they will be going right out to all the pre-order people. Also don't forget, we do have a live giveaway going for this boat. It will be announced around Christmas time. And if you're slacking on entering, remember the one guy who won it last time didn't slack to enter. So get on it. And guess who else won a boat? Out of Georgia for the electric fishing series, we pulled together and got this boat going and then we gave it away at that tournament. And the only reason I don't have a video out on this yet is because I didn't go down there to record it. We tried recording a different way, which I'm now regretting, but with a little luck, hopefully we'll get a video going for this too. All right, so for the most annoying part of this entire adventure, getting out those end caps that are welded on. All the other boats you'll get after this Got the common sense to not do that to the end caps, but this one, obviously, it's one of those production cookie cutter holes. And a circular saw with a Cermit carbide blade or an aluminum blade will cut that off just fine. I would recommend doing that since we lit it on fire with the plasma cutter. Just cut the inner part of the triangle off. Do not cut all the way into the tubing. Try to leave that intact. If you gotta grind the bead off just to get your clean platform, then fine. Also be prepared for the jankiest bootleg bolting system ever, meaning there's a collection of aluminum and also stainless steel, and I think possibly regular steel hardware running through the transom. We also found that through the subfloor, it seemed just like whatever they could get a hold of, they used. And they also had these gigantic two inch aluminum rivets with uh, steel toppers. That's what we're pounding at right now with a punch. These are pretty cool. I mean, a little odd to get out, but they do come out with a little bit of force. So we developed a kit to retrofit old bass boats like these, and that means a lot of the stuff that was done way back is just not gonna work. This whole splash guard thing from back in the day, I mean, the concept, we appreciate it. You know, it did drain the little bit of water that flowed over the back of the transom, but there's just better things now that circumvent all that. It's much easier just to get rid of that. It actually cuts in a lot of space to the back deck. And also you might run into the issue with solid buck rivets, which are the permanently bonded rivet that's holding most of the hole together. You have to grind the ends of those off when they're bonding two pieces of metal together and then just slowly work and pull that off without messing up the rivet. Because you can later on re-mushroom the rivets. Even though it's shorter, it doesn't need to be as long because you took that piece off. What a piece of crap. Oh, this got... So tearing this stuff out was pretty terrible and getting that whole piece out was, you know, whatever it was, but it... Surprisingly, it's been like preserved with motor oil. Well, like you could tell there's a two stroke leaking outboard on this most of the time and you could just tell that it saturated the wood, the two stroke fluid. Pretty much everything in the back of the transom has got to go. The only thing that is going to stay is the transom bracket itself. So we're gonna pry that off and just save it for later, but this thing's pretty useful. We actually sell a version of this. It isn't that wide, but it's big enough so that it serves the same purpose as this, which is giving your transom protection from the constant flex and pressure of the outboard. And you will also have to deal with, hopefully, stainless hardware. There's gonna be a million holes in the transom. There are so many holes by the time one of these boats gets to you, you're like the 10th or umpteenth owner. And well, what comes with that is you're gonna have to take out a lot of hardware. The only thing visible that is giving me problems with removing this transom completely were those little side brackets. And with that, let's see what we got. Oh, it's pretty good back there, except for like one. Oh, never mind. That's 
Ooh, that's real bad. You no. Know? Well, most of it's not that bad. There's only a, oh, GC, that's pretty terrible there. Ooh, that's some bad stuff. Well, we can fix that. Okay. No matter how bad it looks, you'll never know how truly bad it is until you get all that white puppy corrosion off the raw aluminum and expose whatever little aluminum is left from all the oxidation and pitting. So if you order one of our transoms, the 12, it's either 12 or they come in 12 or 15, and it's shorter if you want them. But a 15 inch transom is for like a really tall transom. For this is a 20 inch transom for most long shaft motors. See this? 20 inches. And you likely need a 12 inch transom. And 12 inches that are here, and the other whatever inches are underneath the carry point. You have it run longer, but you're gonna take this out. Um, we're gonna keep that in. We're gonna try and keep as much as we can in. Obviously we lost that. That was actually bondoed in. So th there was problems here earlier because that is pretty much chewed away. And you can, you can see some bondo right there. This transom has some pretty serious like problems. We're gonna have to weld all those holes. Clean the inside as best we could, getting that all out. That was a big mess. We drilled uh, three eighth inch holes on the bottom. Should have went lower there. Probably we'll have to finagle a, a lower hole there. That's how we got the water to drain from the inside out because there's no drainage in the middle. And it was, it was also really clumped very heavily in there and in these little spots. I'll be honest, even with this basic kit we're putting in this boat, it's still a whole lot of work, and I'm not gonna do it again. The only way to not have to ever rebuild a boat again is to make sure all of it's gonna last as long as the hull itself. And there's only one way I can think of making a transom last that long, and that's to make it out of all aluminum. So we have a transom kit that you can cut just like a plank of wood. You take your old transom out, stack it symmetrically on top of this new transom, trace it, and then cut it. I just cut this with a skill saw, with a ceramic carbide blade or an aluminum blade, cut right through it. For V-hull transoms that have odd angles, you can send us a template and we will make you one with the template you've given us. And that's the best way versus trying to cut it. But for John boats like this, you can totally get away with uh, cutting it just like that because well, there's just not a whole lot to the transom. Making an all welded aluminum transom that you can cut and fit just like a piece of wood into your transom, just like this is something we have advocated for a very long time that anybody at a basic DIY level can do. So the only parts that we're gonna re-drill in are this, that, I mean, those four, those four anchoring spots that pivot to here. And then we're gonna put a spacer in there, but for right now it's just holding it tight, holding this in tight, so this is against, as tight as this as it can go. Then we'll have random metal clamps all the way down the top to keep it from trying to warp and shift. And we're just gonna go ahead and plug away uh, with the welder here and just try and try and do it this way. I don't have actually a good plan for this. I put off doing this boat for several times because I didn't have the skill to pull it off. And now that I do, I still even don't want to do it. So I know if you're just building one boat, obviously learning how to weld is, seems like a whole lot to do for just one project. But I doubt that after you learn the skill that you'll just stop at one simple aluminum boat. It's a quite a useful skill. It really isn't that hard to learn. There is definitely a learning curve. I, mean, I wouldn't try to go weld a transom for like a first welding project unless you had, you know, a friend. But it's totally doable and learnable at the DIY level. Now, would I take my welds and go in front of like a professional welder for a job and like demand $50 an hour? Probably not. But you don't have to be in the NBA to play basketball. You don't have to be a carpenter to put a nail in a wall. And it's the same thing. You don't have to be a welder to weld. The bigger focus is, are all the end results here going to be desirable. Once all the welds were there, it was pretty tough. Like every time I welded, it like kept going faster. Like parts of the metal were thinner than the other. So the thickness of the parent metal wasn't exactly what I was welding into. I constantly had to adjust it. Once I welded one part of it, they like it would just I would blow right through it. Then I would get to a part that was actually thick enough to weld. So the, the weld puddles became like more obscene. Had to watch it because then it started to flex. I had to put like rivets and screws into spots I didn't want to do just so I could hold the metal and keep it from bowing out with the heat. But this is all those little tacks that's welded directly to the transom. So the back part is welded directly to the new aluminum. I did mess up a few times. I welded the hardware there. And then there's some parts there that specifically the parts that look like Swiss cheese that were like paper thin. Every time I tried to go for the weld, even on the lowest setting of the welder, it just kept blowing through and the weld puddle kept getting bigger and bigger. 
So I did my best and got around it. But those areas that were really problematic, I will probably be reinforcing with West Systems Thick and Marine Epoxy. Letting that cure, then hanging it over with a pretty thick coat of primer, and then obviously Rust-Oleum oil-based enamel. Once it's coated properly, it will not leak. When you do your cut spots, you might have to re-rivet the cut spot, which I'll have to re-rivet that because I cut where the rivets would, would be across. So, I mean, it's made to trim, but you might have to remod a little bit on the trim. So we'll be sticking a few more down here just to make sure we have max rigidity on this because one side is welded and one side is riveted flat here. And this is a modifiable side. You always want the modifiable side, which is the riveted side up front. So if you, for whatever reason, sometimes you get a difficult one where this is just an odd shape and it's just, it's actually a 16th inch or, or an eighth inch too much in, you can actually trim parts of this sheet off, but do it on the riveted side and it'll work and it'll work really well. And also the transom kit comes with a topping piece. Um, but we're not gonna end up using that because this topping piece is actually a better piece. That actually is a pretty good topping piece. It's got a back spot for the motor and then a, just an overhanging piece that's just much more robust. If there are any janky parts to this whole thing, I would say that it only having like four spots to anchor this bottom piece to the actual transom was not a good idea. So we will probably be putting at least four more bolts for a total of six or actually eight um, across. Cause this piece is really the only thing that's like seating the bottom of the transom to the hull. We dive pretty deep into this by making this the first console rig from start to finish. People have asked me for like, I think five years now to do a boat that has a side console that you can rig a whole boat with. And we go through the entire process and we'll be doing that later in this series. But just as you may have guessed, the most annoying part of this whole thing was not just taking these end caps off, but re-putting new ones on. In the V-hole, we bent sheet metal with a brake and just made them that way. And you could still technically do it this way. I'm just trying to, I cut an eighth inch piece, triangular on both sides symmetrical, and I'm just trying to weld them right to the hole. But really, truth be told, I wish I would have just got thinner sheet metal, like 090 or 116th, and put it on a brake. Because the piece we cut out of that was truly like pretty thin anyways. It wasn't 1 8th. And uh, I get a 60 61 plate, won't even bend. Could have probably got away with like 60 63 eighth inch plate and heated it up and then bent it on the brake I have, but nope. Now I gotta like be forced to weld it. Now I gotta hit it with a hammer or put the hammer on it because it's trying to heat up. The aluminum on the back of the transom is thinner than the top parent metal. I don't know. It's all a learning experience. And then also, yeah, you gotta keep everything flammable away. I'll put my video of the V-Hole end caps up in the description or here pinned in the iCards. You can see it right up in the top right. It's a way easier way to do it than what I did. Cause now I'm gonna have to fill that all in, that void that's left by the round tube. And then I have to grind that off. If there's any gaps between the layer of welds, you gotta do that over it and then grind it again. It's a really horrible process. The only comfort doing it like this gives me is that these end caps are going to be extremely strong. Much stronger than the crappy ones that were put on this boat before. All right, so long story short, it worked out. In the middle right there, we went ahead and riveted tubing and then kind of welded it all together. It works, but definitely not the cleanest or easiest DIY way to do it. Also, after rigging the motor up and everything, I forgot there needed to be a conduit right there on the right-hand side. We will be getting to that. So we'll be getting into the finer rigging and obviously the framing of this whole thing, how we are retrofitting this bass boat to be much better than it ever was before. That is the next video to come in series. I mean, really the whole boat took me two weeks to build and I was taking my time. So can't wait to show you it. Stay tuned.